welcome to my channel please subscribe please hit like I'm trying to get up to 10,000 views it's so hard to get when you're actually doing pocket watch repair videos unless you spend a whole lot of time editing your videos I like to do a continuous video and as you know I've got a sense of humor so I kind of joke around a lot and that doesn't work well you got to be like wrist watch revival guy and be very serious about everything and then people will watch your videos so I don't want to be that guy so here I've got a, uh, what I have is the parts for a platform balance. So there we go. That's the parts for a platform balance. So what is a platform balance? I'm just going to reach over here and I'm going to grab a, an old clock. Look at this old clock. This old clock. And if you look very carefully at this clock, let me turn on another camera here. And I'm going to lift this clock up and... You'll see on top there, that is a platform balance. That is the platform balance that requires repair. So these are really cool, these platform balances. So they were in carriage clocks, and I guess the um, carriage clock was, I'm not sure who invented it, but maybe from, from the French. I heard that uh, there was uh, French generals used to use them to make sure that uh, they were all coordinating their military action strategy situational awareness so this is kind of where it came from i believe i believe why don't you be true so that's that and this is a mapping and web carriage clock and if i just tilt this up a bit like i said i'm not going to cut away here so i'm just going to grab my camera and show you there we go that is a beautiful mapping and web carriage clock and as you can see from the sides of this carriage clock, lots of great gears. They're all big, of course. And there is a gear on the left-hand side there that is sideways. And that gear interacts with the uh, pinion on the top. You can see that turning right now. And that pinion on the top is interacting. Let's go down like this with the escape wheel you can see the escape wheel moving and then the balance itself so i think that this platform for this particular platform clock is not the original it was replaced because it looks way too new but these things are gorgeous these clocks are just gorgeous i keep my winding mechanism stored in the platform clock the door and you open this thing up here like that there we go and there's the winding mechanism there. And I did a video a little while back on these screws, on how to actually set the tolerance of the platform clock with these two screws. And then this screw, or this pivot coming out here, is adjusted. So you wind the platform clock with this one, this screw here. Oh, wait, 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 go way down here. That one there, and then you set it with this one here. So... So anyway, that's the platform clock. So a gentleman gave me work to do. So, and this work is, he begged first of all, right? Because I don't do clocks. But the work is, has to do with r drilling a hole because the pivots are gone on this particular platform clock. So this is a platform, platform part. This is the balance. And what was broken, and I did another uh, video of removing this, but what was broken here was the, I think it was the other side. Was it the other side? Let me look here. Let me pull this off for a second and have a peek. There's one side and there's the other side. So this side of the platform balance required re-pivoting. So that's the side there. Let me just get some focus here, folks focus so that's the side there the other side so that would be the bottom so that's the bottom so the bottom's good the top ain't so good and the top is where i have to repivot so you see that red mark on the side there that's the i put a red mark on there so i could figure out or f i could i put a red mark on the top here so i could determine where the stud for the hairspring goes after I reassemble so that's why and I just stick this platform balance into a piece of Rotico 
so the pivot doesn't get bent. So now I've got to set this up in my lathe. Um, I had to remove the double roller table as well. And that's pointing on the opposite side of where this little dot is here. So, so I've got to set my lathe up to actually drill a hole. Now the hole size, this is, this is tricky, tricky stuff. The hole size here needs to be point three, the hole size needs to be three millimeters. The shaft width is six millimeters, as it says right here. So the hole size needs to be three millimeters. Um, and I have a piece of stock that's in here somewhere. I think it's here somewhere. Where is that stock? It was in here. Anyway, I've got a piece of stock here that is point, it's actually three millimeters. I'm going to drill a hole and put that in and then point one three millimeters is the pivot size. So it's, it's a tricky job, very tricky job, especially because I can't find that piece of stock right now. <laughs> where, oh, where did the piece of stock go? I snapped it off and I put it down and it should be in here, but it doesn't, it's migrated. So we're going to just do the setup right now and start the drilling. So the first thing I need to do is grab a collet that'll grab on to the base of this balance where the good pivot is. So I'm going to go get my collets and find a collet that will do that. Now to speed up the process, I'm going to use a doozy M gauge. This is a doozy M gauge, likely French, and I'm going to measure the diameter of this so I can pick a reasonable size collet right off the bat. Although I think this is probably going to be like a five or something. So there we go. Grab that with a doozy M gauge. I'm looking down the end here and it looks like a seven. Looks a bit bigger than a seven. So I'm going to rest it this way with the bad pivot down. That's collet measurement with the doozy M gauge. So here I have a series of, of gauges, or sorry. So here I have a series of collets. And I said this was around a seven, right? So all I needed to do is grab the seven and see if that's the right size for this. And you just have to hand fit it like this. Flip my little eyepiece down and then hand fit it. Is that too big or too small? That looks like it's just a bit, that's exactly the right size, but not for this. So, so I'm gonna go from a seven to an eight um or maybe to a nine i'm not sure here let me try the eight here no, the eight's just as tight so i'm going to go to a nine and call it sizes i don't think these collets are all the right same brand so so there's a nine so that seems to fit but it seems to be pretty loose loosey goosey uh, it's not too bad so i think a nine might do so i just put that aside on the bench and continue. So through my numerous watch parts and stuff, I have another nine here size call it. I'm just gonna test to see if this size is any closer or tighter of a fit. So I just put that in there like that and nope, that is not any better. And do I have any other sizes here that might help? This is a 10. This is a 10. It looks a bit rusty. It's a little bit tighter of a fit, but I kind of like the other one better. And I have an 8 right here. Look at that. Oh, no, that's a 6. No, oh, yeah, that's a 6. I don't think that would work. Actually, this one here is also fitting. And that says it's a six, so I'll leave this one out. And we'll try both these on the lathe and see how well we do. Well we do. So now we've got all kinds of views confusing you. So I've got these bits here that I got from China. China. I gotta say it like Donald Trump. Got them from China. 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 And these are point three millimeters, 0.3 millimeters written by somebody. And um, these little bits are great. Um, and I'm just hoping I can use one of these without having to taper 
the end because it's most of the time I have to taper the end of this thing in order to get it properly lined up within my whole drilling jig. So as you can see looking downward with my, my many cameras here this is the the um, drill bit I have here and it is it has a tapered end to to allow it to fit into this the um, what are these things called this is the I forget what it's called so here's the lathe I use for drilling holes and hopefully it works well today here I've got myself a dog and the dog's got various hole sizes here and then on the other end of this thing I have I put a tube inside here in order for this to fit properly and so when I tighten this down it will tighten the tube like that and hold everything in place like that it just puts friction on the tube and then I have a draw bar here on the end and this draw bar here has got the the actual bit that's going to be used and there it is there and I had to taper the end of this bit in order to fit into the draw bar like that I have to measure the size of the end of this to make sure it's uh, the right size I'm not sure if it is if it's not the right size then I have to take one of these bits and I have to taper that I will do that in my other lathe downstairs it's a rougher lathe and I take the this pink uh, plastic protector off I put it in that and I use a Dremel tool uh, spinning in the opposite direction to lay the spinning to remove material until it's tapered pro appropriately to fit into the draw bar here. So then this goes in the end like this. I'm being very careful right now as I put this in. This goes in the end like that. And then it hits the end of this and it sticks out like that, as you can see, right? And now when I put the part in here, that part has got to be perfectly aligned um, with this. So when I move the this forward like that it's perfectly aligned for drilling and when I spin it like this the part cannot move period right so and I have a number of collets that I I selected for this so this is one of the collets here and I just have to see how this collet fits in here uh, usually it's when you spin the collets around it finds home I think that's home right there there we go so now that collet is in place right now and then I move I'll back this off uh, to put the part in and then make sure that when I put the part in very carefully um, I don't somehow screw this up so I've got to look down here really close and make sure I don't screw up the pivot on the other side when I put this part in so that's the part that's going to be um, that's the part that's going to be cut, right? So I have to tighten, tighten the collet. And there we go. I usually, I usually tighten it. I'm look down a bit here. I usually hold the um, this with one hand while I tighten it with this hand, right? So I can hold the part with the other hand. Someone said the other day you need more than two hands to be a watchmaker. So once I have it tightened. I can I can see how well it turns like that and I'm going to be facing this off but now I want to bring this close and I need to know what size hole now this here was already uh, fashioned to fit in this particular hole here right so I know it'll fit in this hole like so let me just turn this around a bit and it's a it's a game of millimeters folks a game of millimeters there we go and I can turn this a little bit there we go so now that's that's going through as you can see but is that too big of a bit it might be right I don't know it might be too big a bit so I want to make sure the bit is not too big and I can take this out and measure it against the 0.3 millimeter bit to make sure that's the right size bit. So I take these 0.3 millimeter bits that I have here and grab a bit like this and then measure this against this other bit. And I think it's probably, I'm not sure if that's the same size. I can also use a doozy M gauge to see if the doozy M gauge is telling me that's the same size.
and they'll do that. So the first job I've got to do other than setting all this up is to face this part off so I can actually drill a hole in it. So I want to tighten this just so it's just sort of tight but not so tight I can't move it. So it's a bit of a it's a bit of a touchy job to do. So I do this with I know that it's not tight there, and I know that it's starting to get a bit tight there. And I know you can ride a piece of material on the edge as it's turning, and sometimes that will that will allow the part to uh, straighten up. So I do that, and then tighten it, and make sure it's fairly tight. And that's a pretty good job there. The wheel's not absolutely centered here, but I can remove the material on the end here because there's a little knobby or nubby that needs to be removed on the end. Now I also want to make sure that I understand the amount of pivot that needs to be at the very end of this. So I've got another tool here that's very fine and I can basically take a measurement from the end of this pivot going outward and that way once the material is removed I understand how much pivot needs to be sticking out the end so that's around that distance right there right there should be adequate Yeah, and if I give you a close-up here, which camera should I use? This one here. This is the close-up, so this is the tool here. And that little tiny gap is what I'm looking at for the remaining pivot after I've actually drilled the hole and after I've put the material in. So just got to move everything out of the way here so it doesn't get too nasty. Now I've got my um, various collets that I use, right? And I just need one that's... Uh, one to face this off. So if I grab, not, I said collets, I meant gravers. So I'm, I'm allowed being confused. So I'll grab this graver here, this one right there, and that should do the job. Look at all those cameras. I'm doing a multi-camera shot here, multi-camera. So that's this one here. So I'm going to use this one. And I'm going to just test and see how sharp this is. So put this graver into the uh, into its holder here and I've got a tip over tool rest here so the tip over tool rest then also needs to be adjusted so it's not too close to the material right so it has to be at an angle so I have to loosen it like that and turn this in at an angle because I'm going to need to approach this part at an angle um, to, to be able to grave it properly with the uh, like that to face it off so that's like that. And I'm just going to do a test fit here, like that. And it tightens on the bottom with this particular lathe. I just don't know whether that's the right distance yet. So i got to get up close here again and, and have a boo at it. So that's way too high. I'm going to lower that a little bit. Just have to undo this like this. The only good thing about all these cameras is that you're you're always going to see what I'm doing because there's all the different angles. So there's that's pretty good there. And I'm going to go up to the part here and see. Okay, that needs to be a little higher and a little closer. So higher and closer. So take that off again. A little bit higher like that. And I'm just going to flatten it out a bit and a little bit closer. Sounds like a song. And I don't want it touching the part, right? So when I spin this, sometimes I would grave this out on another lathe. And, and then so that's pretty good there. And if I look at this here, is that too close or too far? I'm not sure. What will that do? It needs to be a little bit higher. The other thing too is I can file that flat. 
that might be what I end up doing here because engraving it is what I'd normally do like to, to face it off but I really don't want to break it I break the end part of it so Yeah, I might use a microfile on this because it doesn't seem to be cutting like this. So I, get, I can get this tip over tool rest out of the way. Make sure it's not hitting anything. Looks like it's not wanting to turn, but let me just get this out of the way like that. And I'm going to get a file out and see if filing is a smarter thing to do. So here I've got a 2000 grit plate. And I find these plates um, remove a lot of material fast so I can look down on this from this other side and then make and see if I can remove the material with this plate because they tend to work fairly well I just have to make sure it's relatively flat I pull that away and have a little look at the end here and it is doing a pretty good job removing material so we're going to continue using the plate and I don't want to go past the mark where the um, where the bevel is as the uh, or the cone is as the pivot ends because that's where I measured the end I'm almost where I need to be. So I get a little piece of Rodico out and clean the end off of this thing. And I wish I had that little piece of metal from that I had already selected from before. I'm not sure where it went. So that's that I think is that's it. Pretty darn good right there. So see if I can get a better close up for you. So there it is there. It's looking fairly flat. And that's the end piece. So there we go there. So now I, all I have to do is center it. So now I'm going to use this exact same plate to uh, kind of hand sharpen my graver here. So I've got a little bit of sharpness on the end of this graver. Now I have um, proper proper sharpening tools to do that but I find that they, I can do it very quickly by hand without a problem. Now this next step I've got to put these glasses on because their time is 20 and I want to get it really close because I want to put a very little dim small dimple in the center of that shaft in order to uh, center that so or to, to create a center for the drill bit. I've also taken the tailstock off of the uh, lathe so I can rest my hand here while I'm doing this, and it's so tricky to do this kind of stuff. It's, uh, I don't know whether this graver is sharp enough yet.
So I'm going to have to work on the tip of this graver. It's not sharp enough. So I couldn't show you because I was so close here, but I believe I've got myself a, a little bit of a dimple in there for the start of the drilling right there. So I was able to just, I sharpened the end of the, of the uh, graver here. This is a carbide graver. And you just have to press in ever so lightly to get this thing going, right? So, so that's that. Now I have to set up the drilling. So this is the stock material I'm going to use. Um, and I have to snap off just a little piece off the end. Probably, um, probably quarter of an inch. Once again, I'll just measure the back end of this with my doozy M gauge. I'll just show you the gauge on one of the pictures on the left lower left hand side so so we're going to get in close here and just measure the end here and then look at the number and it says it's six millimeters right so that's pretty 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 small and then this piece of material if i measure that it says it's five millimeters so now I'm not sure if I had a piece that's even smaller than this. Let me have a look. So I do have a piece that I've already graved down before, and it's 5 millimeters wide, but the end is 4 millimeters wide, so I can reuse this piece here. So I want to have enough on the end to, to be able to, to work this piece. So if I, if I nip it kind of right here, that should be long enough to be able to work the piece without a problem. So I'm just going to take the collet out here like this and try to hold both sides with my fingers as I nip this, right? So I don't lose either piece. There we go. Perfect nipping. As you can see there, or you can see here. So I just nip that off. So I'll take this wire and put it out of the way. And then this is the one I want to use. This one right here is the one that I want to use for making that pivot right there so i'm going to put this out of the way i'm going to put this back in the box where i should have been before and i've got the right collet size that i've selected already so i'm going to take this collet here and put this aside so it can go with that like that and then i need the next thing i need to do is align this thing up properly with the lathe dogs so i actually can drill this hole and i want to see if i actually have to uh, change the bit on the end there. I may have to change the bit. So I've determined that this four millimeter drill bit I want to bring down to a three millimeter drill bit. So what I'm going to do is I've got to go downstairs and I've got to taper this thing. So I taper this right so it fits into the end of this draw bar here. It doesn't fit right now but it has to fit into that draw bar in order to hold it properly. So I got to go downstairs and do this. So I've taken the pink thing and made jiggy off it. Now I've got to go taper this. So it fits a size 32 collet. And I've got the drill bit on the inside. So in order to properly align this lathe dog, you have to have this pipe here, which goes all the way down. And if I could just do it from a huge perspective, it would do that and line up with this Part or the lathe, so line the lathe up. So, so as I go into the smaller increments here, like I think three or something is kind of it's kind of right over here. And I do this. I have to make sure that this is lined up like that. There we go. So that, and I check the end to make sure it's lined, and. There it is there. So perfectly aligned. Now this will align itself, but once you have it aligned like this, then you have to tighten it like this. So you tighten this part here, that way it stays aligned. So when I go like that, it's aligned. Now I have to make sure that, that the, put, the end pivot here, let me just move my camera a little bit. I have to make sure that the pivot here fits the uh, diameter of the hole on the end so I had to make this rod because I couldn't find the one that was on my floor somewhere a long time ago I also had to 
fit this to be able to put that into the tailstock. You can see the, where I'm doing down below, right? So that had to fit in there, and then this has to fit inside of that, like this. And then this is completely lined up. So it's lined up like this, right? But with the circle and the um, this particular dag is lined up with this draw bar that I put in here, right? But I have to make sure now that this is lined up with this. So a lot of thising going on here. I can look at that from this side here and see, is that lined up? Okay, it is now. So that's lined up there. So if I bring the draw bar, bring this bar in a little closer, like that, and then make sure that's floating in there. And what I'll do is put a drop of oil on this, but then to cut the hole, I need to put penetrating oil. So I can tighten this now, and that'll tighten the bar up, like that. And it just squishes the bar on the other end. Now, will this actually turn? I don't know. Let's see. So now that turns. Now what I should do is loosen it just a bit. And then I can... I can push that in a bit. I can make sure that this part is absolutely centered for drilling. So, so far, so good. And I'll bring my bar in here again. So you can see that sticking through now, right? I'm almost out of real estate with this bar. And that is perfectly aligned there. i got to push it through the other end because it's I have to, I should have probably brought this in a little closer because I'm almost out of real estate with this thing. But I don't need it anymore. That aligned it perfectly. So now I've got the drill bit. This is the drill bit right here. Now, normally what I do, I can start drilling with the knobby there with this drill bit, but normally I cut the drill bit in two and I sharpen it. And I do that so the end yeah I do that so the end of the drill bit doesn't break off on me otherwise I'm in deep trouble those are the two new ones this is the other one the older one and all I do with this is I take that drill bit and basically take this piece of diamond grit and I take the drill bit and I rub it on the diamond grit like that so it, it toughens it up. But the first thing I'm going to do is snap this drill bit off right here. They don't need that big a hole, right? And these things snap so easy. Snap it off and put it in my garbage. So this built drill bit is now snapped off. Now, I'm not sure whether I use it like this or whether I break it off, but we can try it like this and see what happens. So there's my drill bit now, and I know that drill bit will go through that hole. Pretty sure, anyway. I should, I should check that again. You got to double check and then double check, and then just when you think you've checked it, you check it again. Let me check this here. See if that's going to go through the hole. Yeah, that's going through the hole. So I'm going to give you a little micro look at it. Just let me move my cameras around here. And that's what it looks like here. So that's the micro look. So if you can see that drill turning there, it's going through the hole. And it should cut through the shaft. So so let's just do some praying here. And I'm not sure how far down through the shaft I need to go, but I want to go a bit down. So going to start off by eyeballing it. I don't want the drill bit to snap because that causes, basically that's a ruined piece if it snaps. So 
I need some cutting oil on that and then we'll start the job. So here's the cutting oil, cutting fluid. I just put a little bit on my finger or on a piece on a toothpick or just a pick of some sort like this piece of pegwood and just touch the drill bit with that so I can ensure that I've got some cutting oil on this because without the cutting oil it doesn't work very well. So let's do that right now. So I'm going to pull the drill bit out here and then put a little bit of cutting oil on the stick here like that and then I'm going to apply the cutting oil to the drill bit like that. So now I've got a bit of cut cutting oil on that drill bit um, and let me just put the stick aside I might be able to reuse that and now I want to make sure I get in nice and close like this and see if this thing will actually cut without snapping I may have to make a hat on the end of the drill bit I've had to do this before because it wouldn't drill without a hat on the end of it. So back that off and I can actually have a look at what I've got here. Let me just back that off a bit and see if I can see any action on the end of that hole. I'm just going to back everything off here just to see if I've got any drilling going on. And if I don't, I've got to basically use my diamond plate and cut and make a very small hat on the end of that drill bit. These Sometimes these parts are almost impossible to drill out if they're hardened too much. Yeah, that's not doing anything, so I got to make a hat on the end of that, like a roof on the end of that drill bit. So make the roof on the drill bit with a diamond plate and just sort of scraping it one way and to make the roof. Just do this. It's a, uh, you want it to have a cutting surface, so I'm just going to try not to break the drill bit. But It just then becomes more like a watchmaker's drill bit. I do this and then I rotate it the other way. And do the same thing on the other side. And if I can make a little tiny hat on either side, then wonderful. So very difficult to see that move. I'm going to stick it through again and then I'm going to put some cutting oil on it again. And hopefully it starts to cut this time. I know if I press too hard, the drill bit will break. Take it out and see if there's any success at all. Take it out. actually do not see material coming out yet so I'm gonna have another look at it though and see what's going on we do have some success I see the hole starting which is really good yeah I can see a hole here um, see if I can show you this 
There you should see the beginning of a hole in dead center screen. So let's keep drilling. So I'm going to put on a little bit more cutting oil here. Just put it on the stick and then transfer it from the stick to the drill bit. For without cutting oil you are nothing. Now again, I'm going to start cutting again but be very careful doing this. Let me just move my camera around here so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Now I'm just going to go inside here. You don't want too much heat on there, so you want to take it off, take it back a bit. Put a little more cutting oil on the end, like that, and back in. I'm pulling that out again and I'm going to take this back again and this time I'm going to test to see I'm going to put the drill bit forward like that and I'm just going to test so you can see the muck there on the end which is a good sign that means there's there's it's drilling and I'm going to test to see how deep this is by just coming close like that I've already got the bit sticking through here and just go into the part a bit. Yeah, I can see how far it is. It's not super far right now. So what I'm going to do is move this forward again in place. Right, tighten this up. And I'm actually going to take the drill bit out again. And I'm going to sharpen it again. Just to make sure I'm not, like, just trying to rub metal against metal here. So that's sharpened up again, so I put that tapered side into the draw bar again. Just rotate it a bit so I know it's in. And very carefully put it down the center of the uh, of the whole mechanism. This drilling holes like this is, I think it's one of the hardest things to do, especially when they're like 0.3 millimeters. A little bit of cutting oil on there. <clears throat> Man's best friend. And then back at her. <clears throat> I'm really just trying to eyeball how far it's going, how deep it's cutting. And I'm going to back it off again and see how deep it is. It's uh, not an easy job, I'm telling you. It's not an easy job. Let me turn on the other cameras here for you. We've got the capture right and capture left. There you go. <coughs> Excuse me. Probably breathing in some bad chemicals downstairs. So there it is again. And we've got a little more action on that hole. And I'm just going to clean up the drill bit here a bit. And now I'm just going to move this forward to see how deep that hole is. It's still not that deep. It's deep. It's a little bit deep, but not that deep. I want to I want to go a bit further on this hole. Just move that 
back into place like this and tighten it up. Once again, a little bit of cutting oil on it on the end here. I think my stick is absorbing all the cutting oil. <laughs> and then back at it. So a shout out to Sonny Morehouse if he's watching this to see uh, me doing a little bit of lathe work here. And uh, another shout out to a very fine watchmaker, Chris Spinner. He's got an amazing watch channel and does an incredible job um, producing his videos. I've watched his videos and they're so professional. They're not like mine. <laughs> Hopefully you enjoy mine. No. I'm just doing this so I can show you how it's done. And I may take this out and sharpen it again in a second. putting a little bit of forward pressure on this but not so much that it's going to snap and I'm going to take it out again I'm a chicken poop when it comes to that so I'm going to sharpen this up and then go back in again chicken poop I sharpened it up again and put a little bit of cutting oil on it again. Like that. I'm being ever so careful here. Pressing in on the part and trying to make sure I don't heat it up too much. So now I'm going to pull it back out again. This takes so much time, folks. It's so much time. I'm just going to dab this with my Rotico and I want to see how deep it is again. What I'm trying to do is dig a hole here and then I'm going to just make pivots until the right one fits and that way I don't have to glue anything and there's some leftovers which is good stuff I see some some actual crap I know it's cutting right so I'm just gonna clean a hole off here I think it's that hole there and I just move it forward like this and then put the drill all the way through to the other side and then measure the hole that's the trick right there. I gotta get closer to get man. Just a bit further, I think, might do it. But I'm going to sharpen this up once again. All right, here we go again, folks. This is as exciting as watching paint dry, right? before you snap it. I think that did a good job. That went a little bit deeper. I think I'm going to test this now again. And there's more guck on the end, which is basically filings, I'll call it. Right? And I want to clean the end of the drill bit. I just need to stab it into the rotico. And I think the, the, the lathe dog is fine bark bark. So let me see how deep it is now.
still not super deep. I want it to be a bit deeper than this. I'm going to go back in again and start cutting. Cutter. One thing about this lathe, this dog I've got here, the lathe dog here, is that it keeps it super aligned, which is really nice. So it's just difficult because the material is not soft material, it's hardened steel. And I'm trying to cut trying to put straight pressure on the part without snapping it off that's without snapping the drill bit off that's the hard part so it is so difficult this is I think I think the guy that asked me to do this I'm gonna give him shit when I see him next time <laughs> he's watching right now and and all you watchmakers out there don't call me up and ask if I'm gonna drill a hole for you because it takes a fucking a full day did I swear <laughs> I did it takes a full day to drill this hole so it's a it's a long commitment I'm trying to see how deep it is right now it's almost deep enough I just need it deep enough to fit I'm gonna clean this up a bit. All right, time to sharpen it again and go back in. One or two more times and that's it. Oil away, oil's well that ends well. Man. If you pull the oil stick away fast, then the oil stays on. If you pull it slowly, then the oil doesn't stay on. So here we go again. I touch the, uh, the uh, part of the lathe that holds the uh, thing back in place. So let's just try again here. Pull it out, and I'm going to measure it again. That might be good. We'll see. The good thing about this is it's the upper pivot, and when it's the upper pivot, there's some mud here from the hole. When it's the upper pivot, you uh, don't really have to worry uh, about the pivot falling out because it's already it's it's secured between the wheel and the top you see how far this goes in here Not going in that far, but it might be far enough. I may go one more shot, and I want everybody to pray that the, the bit doesn't break on me. Because that's what happens when you go too deep. It catches, and the bit breaks, and then you're starting all over again. Or if you can even get the bit out. Cutting oil, and then back in, baby.
I'm going to pull it out. And I'm going to sharpen it again and go back in. Okay, I think that's as deep as I want to go. It's not a very deep hole, but it should be deep enough to be able to hold the pivot that I'm going to make. So that is tough, tough work. So if I go any further with this drill bit, I'm going to snap the bit and it's not going to work anymore. So let's get this thing set up to make the pivot side. Just going to clean the end up a bit. So it's not a very deep hole for the pivot, but it should be deep enough. Yeah, given that this is riding, uh, there's nowhere for the pivot to go. So the theory here is that I'm going to be able to put the pivot in in that hole and then I'm going to be able to uh, just shape the end and we're good to go. It's going to be very tight though. Alright, hopefully you can see that this is going to be the world's smallest hole. There it is there on the end. It's not very deep but I really don't want to go any deeper than this. This, is, this metal is really hard to drill into and what I want to do is just make a very small pivot on the end and see if that fits in nicely. So you put the balance back in a piece of Rodico and then set this thing up for uh, making the pivot. Alright, there's a the piece of metal I'm working with. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to keep the camera where it is right now. This might be just impossible to uh, work on this with the camera where it is. So I'm going to turn these left and right cameras off so we can focus on this part here. And i got to get my graver out and then we're ready to go. So the trick here is that this this bit here needs to fit on the end here. And it's got to go down a bit. Once I've got that fit, then I got to flip this around. I got to cut it off, like part it and then make the pivot on the other side. I may be able to make most of the pivot before I part it, but it's so small it's going to be a task that only brave people or dare take on. I may get my smaller gravers out here to work on this. Alright, so I've got my very small, I've got 4 millimeter flat graver here, so let's see if this can take material off. I'm going to lower the tool rest. Lower the tool rest! So that piece does fit into the hole. I just want to take a little bit more material off the edge here. That's good enough. And then I'm going to dab, grab a piece of Rodico here and just dab the end of it. And then I'm going to see if that piece fits. And again, it's a super shallow hole here for this particular balance because uh, I didn't want to break the drill bit off in it. Yeah, it's going in. I'm not, what I'm not sure of about if is, is it going in as deep as it can go in. That's what I'm not sure about. So I'm going to cut a little bit more material off because I can screw this up and start all over again. That's the good part about doing it this way. So I'm going to just take a bit more material off here. Right around there. So I'm going to need to, my tool rest needs to be a little bit lower. Yeah, just like about there, I think. Should be a little closer too, by the way. So that is not close enough. I mean, it may adjust it. So now I'm going to very carefully try to shape this pivot 
I know how kind of how far it goes in and I know I need to, sh to cut it off and shape it near the end so this is this could be super tricky because I don't want to lose the um, I actually don't want to lose the pivot so if I want to create a 0.3 millimeter pivot on the end and kind of part it right where it is which is going to be super hard because then I got to turn this thing around put it in a graver and then work it with a stone and I'm not sure if I can do that so let's just try this out and I'll just do a little bit of it and see what happens To lower the tool rest just a tad. Hopefully that wasn't a tad too much. Twist it over and then back in I go. Oh, I think that's perfect. Let me tighten everything up here so it's not going anywhere. I think it just moved on me. And then I can start working it. I know that it's going to be right around here where it parts off. So I've got to kind of work it to, to there. I want to be a lot closer with my graver here. So I want to move the, the whole thing forward a bit. And I need to put the graver up here while I'm adjusting it. This is not easy, folks. Especially this, doing this. So I don't want anyone to send me another platform clock. I will kill them. I swear. All right, so that's as far that way as I want to go. Like that. I can tighten that up. like that and then I want to go up just a tad is that a tad too much or a tad too little not sure all right let's go back in and have a look that was actually I think that'll be perfect the hard part is is parting this thing now. So I've worked this part to an incredible size right now. And I need to take a picture of this because no one will believe how small this is with a graver. So I'm just going to zoom in like this and see if I can get this picture here. There we go. Now now I'm going to see if I can I'm going to back this off because I don't need this anymore. Back this off so I can just do this with the tool rest. This is all experimental, folks. All experimental. Oh my god. And now I'm going to I want to take this I want part and just break it off, but I guess the best way to break it off will be to use this where it's going to end up and just put that on there and what I don't want to do is actually lose it There we go. So that is the part right there. Stuck into the hole. 
Now, can I turn that into a pivot? I don't freaking know. We'll see. I should end the video right now. So that's 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 it right there. And I might be able to shape that into a uh, into the right size pivot point one three, but I've got a whole other thing to set up for that. So I think we're gonna stop now. So you saw what I did here, drilled the hole, did all that. A lot of work today on this. So I'm gonna chuck that up on the other side and then uh, and see if I can fashion that into the pivot that I need to fashion it into. All right, the last part of this whole jobby do hickey is to use a stone to finish the pivot on the end. And I'll be rubbing it like this with the uh, with the stone. So just to give you a bit of an example how this is done, you just put the stone underneath like that, and then you're working the pivot with the stone like this. It doesn't take much to get this pivot down to the right size. The other thing I have is that this pivot is just sitting there in the hole I made. So, so it's a bit tricky because I don't want it to shake loose. So, But if I screw this up, I can always make another one. That's the cool part about this. So we'll just... We'll just work it a little bit and then that'll be it. Now the other thing I can do is Loctite this in and then work on it. Work on it later once it's in decent shape because that little pivot wants to come out of that hole. <laughs> so that's it. Anyway, that's it right there. I'm not sure if that's the right size or not, um, but I'll have to test it. But that's fundamentally repivoting. Um, if I could get a longer hole out of this shaft without actually breaking my drill bit, I would. But I pray for now, that's good enough. Um, I don't think I can get a longer hole. This is the top of the, uh, the piece here, so I'll be able to tell whether this fits in. Actually, I think it actually fits, <laughs> which is crazy, but it, I think it actually fits. That is crazy. So it might actually end up working like this. I have to put a flashlight on here to make sure we're good and I can fit this in. So so it's it may require a little bit of finessing again, but it's not too bad. Yeah, it fits into the hole. Perfect size, my friends. Anyway, that's it. Repivoted. I have to reassemble this. And thanks for watching my videos. It's been a long one. Sorry about that. But uh, JD, please keep tuning in to my channel and I'll keep making kind of neat videos. And there's a quick setup with all of the stuff going on. Stuff, I tell you. Stuff. I've taken this repivoted pivot and I've got to finish off the pivot part and it's so friggin small you wouldn't believe it there it is folks there's the final pivot I just have to take that out and then put it into the hole that I made and the thing that should be done all right you see that little tiny part right there that is the pivot that is the pivot that go has to go into the watch it is so friggin small. So I'm going to do this on a staking set because it's just too small. All right, I'm going to center this right now because it requires to be centered. I'll take this, the balance out of the hole here very carefully. And then, oh my God, nice and easy. Turn it around the other way so it doesn't mess with the bottom pivot. 
And there's where the hole is right there. Tighten that up. And let me go back down again. I don't know where I am. There we go, right there. And now I'm going to fit this pivot in here. I should probably do it using Rodico as opposed to my tweezers because I could screw this up. back in the hole here because for some reason it doesn't want to go in the hole although it fit in the hole before when it was on the lathe so I'm not too concerned I'm just going to stick it in the rotico here and see if I can use the rotico to push it in there we go now I want to get a stake out here so I can tap on that. I just want to get a steak that's average size steak, not the one that my wife had for dinner last night. So I've got the steak in here and I just pushed that down and rotated it so it's in there nicely. Now again, I don't know if this is too long or too short or I need to figure this out somehow, but for now I'm just going to leave it like that. It might be too long actually, but I just don't know. So leave it like this and then I want to put it in the balance and spin it. And I want to make sure I do that before I actually, um, I need to do that before I get too rambunctious and get this whole darn thing back together again. So. This is the screw for the balance here. So let's just see what I can figure out here. So I think I've got partial success. So if you look at the balance sitting there with the new pivot, and I just give it a squirt of air like this. It's running. <laughs> 